Hello and welcome back to The Art of Reduction here at Trailway Studios produced by Malone Media. I'm going to be your barber today, Reeve Andrews. Today we have a great episode. We're going to do a bald fade. We have a great client today. His name is Josh. He has very dark hair with a really healthy white scalp. So I kind of find that kind of hard to cut when you have that kind of contrast with a really clean, healthy white scalp with really dark hair. So we have a lot of detail work today, some razor work, scissor work, clipper work. We're gonna go through the whole gambit today. So Josh, if you could come in. Thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate Good seeing you. Oh, always, thank you. So today, like I said, we're gonna focus on a bald fade today. And so like you can tell with my client, he has very beautiful dark hair, very nice white skin. So it really is a kind of a, 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 it creates a little, a little struggle trying to create a really beautiful fade when you have those kind of two combinations. So like I said, here at Art of Reduction, my main focus is to really still bring tough hair. I'm not here to cut easy hair that you know everyone kind of sees and does. Like, I'm really here to grow myself and grow with you guys. So like I said, I'm always gonna try to bring haircuts that I find a little hard, um, just so that we could learn together here. So I've been cutting Josh's hair for almost like eight years now, I would believe, and uh, I just really enjoy his energy. He's a great guy, great family, and uh, I really just like how he allows me to cut his hair. So today, again, we're gonna be doing more of a mid fade, and we're gonna kind of drop it down a little low through here. We're gonna put a hard part in on the left side over here. He likes to wear it kind of swooped back, and then really usher into a really clean fade. So I'm gonna start by spraying him down with a little bit of Layrite grooming spray. And it's just, this is kind of like tacky water. So unlike just like normal water, H2O, this has a little bit of sediment in it, a little bit of tack. So it's gonna allow me to have a little bit more control of his hair as we go. So what I wanna do is I wanna reduce some of the bulk on top. So I, cause that tight, we're gonna go so tight on the bottom. If we start really tight and usher into a lot of this length, it's gonna make it a little harder. So what I like to do with Josh, I like to, first of all, reduce a little bit of that length and bulk on top so that when we really dive into our fade, we, ha we don't have to go into so much hair. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water as well, as well as that grooming spray. And most important, like I think you've seen a lot of my videos, I really like to leave the bangs almost to the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tilt them down. Let me show you how I find my bangs. You know, I usually just kind of eyeball, but if you're kind of new to the game, you could easily just put a comb on the top of their head and where that V, that little angle of that comb meets his head, is kind of where his bangs are. So what I usually do is I kind of put a comb on them and then I'm just going to snap a line straight across where that angle met and these are his bangs. So what I would like to do first is I'm just gonna partition them off, add a couple clips here. And so got, that to me just gives me a little bit of a guideline like, hey Reeve, don't really mess with the hair in front of this first. We're gonna just kind of work in the back and remove some of the bulk. So I'm gonna bust out my uh, Tori Hanzos today. A nice, I have a swivel thumb today, which I really enjoy. Really allows me to really articulate my fingers, my hands, and really kind of get some really cool angles um, with my haircut today. So let's add a little bit more water onto Josh. And with any haircut, majority of the time, it's a little shorter in the crown. And as we adventure forward, we're gonna gain and keep length. So what I wanna do here, I'm just gonna sit right behind him. I'm going to grab the very front of this haircut besides the bangs. And again, I'm just gonna start creating and reducing some of this bulk. So I'm just gonna keep coming up. And his hair is kind of coming back and towards the right. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm going to direct this hair back and towards the right as I adventure back and down to the crown of his head. And as I come back to the crown of his head, I'm getting a little more shorter and shorter as I go. So I want it longer up here. And as I get farther back, I'm just gonna reduce and get a little shorter in his crown. And we have to be careful that we don't have any alfalfas or any hairs that stick up. One thing I like to do is I like to find the eye of the hurricane. So what I mean by that is I really try to find his natural shape of his head back here. So like I said, I think everyone has, you know, a, a crown or, you know, where their hair kind of naturally kind of grows a pattern. So with Josh, his hair starts right here and his wind patterns kind of go around. So let's go ahead and just start watching which way those wind patterns and that hair pattern grows. And I want to start taking down some of this bulk in the back. 
and I'm just going to follow which way his hair grows. So I'm going to pick it up. His hair kind of grows towards the right here. So I'm directing it there. His hair kind of grows back and down, taking that down. And again, like I said, my main objective just was starting with the top is so when I really start moving into his fade, you know, I don't have all this hair that I'm, I'm coming up into. So I really just want to create a nice clean shape. And really majority of this haircut, I would say 80% of my energy and time will actually be on his fade, the razor work, the hard part. His hair on top, he, we like it a little longer. So really what we're doing, we're just kind of shaping it up. I cut his hair about every two, three weeks. So his hair does grow very quickly. And so I am just kind of rounding over on the edges because that fade, you know, we're gonna kind of bring right into here. So my goal is to really clean up this like right above or on the occipital bone. And so that we have a nice clean hair, hair to kind of bring into that fade. So again, just picking it up. I, I mean, I usually do two or three sniffs with every, every grab of hair, um, kind of smaller ones, just to kind of keep me in check, make sure I'm not accidentally cut my knuckle or cutting too much hair off. But most importantly, guys, it's just about watching which way his hair grows and finding patterns. That's my biggest thing with hair cutting is just finding patterns with the hair so it helps me out keep an, a game plan, keep an idea on what to do. And it just really helps me out. So like I said, I'm just watching which way his hair grows. I'm grabbing it and I'm kind of pushing it or yeah, I'm just kind of pushing it in the direction that I want it, kind of directing it, I guess is the word I would want to call it. Directing the hair into the direction I want it to lie and more importantly, the way he styles it out. So let's go ahead and continue cleaning up this corner keeping a lot of this length. Like I said, I want it shorter in the back. And as we move towards those bangs, we're gaining and adding length. So let's go ahead and kind of tap right into this, making sure it's not sticking up. So far, so good. A lot of point cutting. Just as we move forward, we're getting a little longer and longer. And so far, this is looking really good. And I could kind of tilt him down. Thank you, Josh. And then I'm just, I mean, you could just start seeing the hair. It looks a little thick in this corner right here. So let's go ahead, grab some of this hair and just find my points. Find those little points or those V's that are coming out. And if I could eliminate those V's or those points, I know I'm gonna have a nice rounded haircut. It's gonna be nice and smooth and it's really gonna look good for my man Josh right here. So I can't thank you guys enough for, for viewing and, and watching these, these haircut videos. We're getting a lot of great publicity and a lot of people are liking it. So I really appreciate you guys tapping in and feel free to ask questions. We're always on to answer anything as we see you guys comment. And I just can't thank you guys enough for almost over a year of us working with Henry and Malone Media here at Trailway Studio. So it's been a great opportunity. And like I said, I'm, I'm here to learn as well. So I, I have learned, I have grown a lot as a human and more importantly as a barber as well through these videos. So I can only hope the same for you guys. So as I get closer to finishing up this top, we'll start moving towards those bangs and then we'll really start ushering it into this fade. So let me kind of show you on this side, I can kind of work over here as well. Again, keeping that part nice and clean so I know where to grab and just really making this look really nice for Josh. Point cutting, I'm a big, big fan of point cutting, making this look really nice and pretty. The lighting in the studio is really, really good. So I could really see what I'm doing. And I really appreciate that. So as you could tell, it looks, you know, I, I got a lot of that shape on top looking really pretty. There, it, it blends really nicely. There's some shape. There's maybe it's a little thick right here. So let's go ahead and tap back in. See this little corner right here? Just knock it out. Knock it out. Thank you. Perfect. So again, it, I, it, there's a thousand ways to bake a cake. As long as you get a really nice, delicious cake, there's a thousand ways to cut a haircut as long as we get a really nice haircut. So like I said, what I'm doing, I could be totally wrong. You might not like what I did. You might have been taught differently. That's okay. You know, that's, again, we're here to have fun. It's art. It's, 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 we're supposed to be enjoying what we do behind the chair. So 
I personally don't like to start at the same place with every haircut and every client. I think every client's different. We need to treat them differently. Their energy's different. Their hair is different. You know, everything. So it really, if I treat and cut every single person the same, I'm doing some injustice, not just for myself, but for my client and my shop as well. So now, I always think the bangs are some of the most important parts. So I really like, that's why I like to kind of mark them off and then focus only on the bangs when I get there. So we worked and cleaned up the back end already. Let's go ahead and kind of clean up that corner. This corner seems just a little thick. And now we could really kind of look at his bangs a little bit more. And I really want to keep some length and energy so we have something to staple back when we do style out this haircut. Because he likes to have a little bit of lift and it come back. It's not just kind of plastered towards his, it's not like plaster on his forehead and over. We like a little bit of energy. So let's go ahead and just add a little bit of water. And we need to be careful because I, I, I find that the bangs don't really grow as fast as the rest of the cut. Um, meaning the sun, the wind, he's putting hats on, he's running his hands through his hair. So basically the, the front of the hair gets kind of damaged and beat up by the world and the atmosphere more than majority of the hair. So with that being said, I'm not gonna take nearly as much off as I did this back section because I wanna play it a little safe and for, I would much rather, and it's the first thing my client sees when he opens his eyes. He sees his, the front of his head, he sees the bangs. So I would much rather my client be like, hey Reeve, you think we could go a little shorter in the bangs than me try to assume how short he wants the bangs and all of a sudden I take them too short. So what I'm really doing here is I really am just kind of trimming up the bangs. I did more of a haircut through the back portion of this cut, but really up in the front, I really just want to just trim these up, leave a lot of links so we have something to style out. But most importantly, I really just want a nice shape for my client. So let's go ahead. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna just kinda clean them up as I go. So I'm gonna grab a foil Velcro strip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow his bang. And what I'm doing is I'm just pushing all the good hair out of the way kind of leaving some of this little baby hair. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna grab my air control real quick. I'm gonna block his face. And I'm gonna hit him just a little bit of light hairspray. Well, I like this stuff because there's no real hold. It's just it's a little bit of a, ta it's a tackier, it's, it's a hairspray, so it's tackier than my grooming spray. So when I go ahead and grab my brush or my comb again, and all I'm gonna do is I'm keeping all that long hair, all the good long hair I wanna keep up, and I'm just going to pull down these little bitty baby hairs. And some of these I wanna keep, in. if they're long enough to go back, I wanna keep them. So let's go ahead and pin that back up. And I know this is a little tedious, but that's okay. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be tedious here. And so all these little bitty baby hairs, I want to get out of the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and just tap these out. Keeping all that really good hair. And we're just getting away these little bitty, you know, there's probably 10 or 15 of these little baby hairs that aren't going with the haircut, kind of get a little cattywampus on them. And, and to me, they just kind of, this just makes it a lot cleaner look. When he opens his eyes, there's no little fringes or little baby hairs just kind of kicking out. So this is really going to help me create a nice shape for my clients. I'm being very soft. Cleaning up the forehead here. Let's go ahead and brush this off. I'm a big fan of just working as I go. So I already have the trimmer in my hand. Why not do a little bit of eyebrow detail? So I'm just gonna kind of clean them up here. Push. I could do a quick little lineup on the side real quick. If you notice when I'm working, these are some pretty, pretty intense little areas. You know, his eyebrow, his eyes right here. So, you know, his eyes are closed, he's relaxed. So if I just, if I just come in and just touch him with my trimmer first, he might flinch, he might move, I might lose his eyebrow, that would be terrible. So if you notice, before I do any kind of really close detail work around some of these areas, I always have a hand on their head, keeping a position, and I always have a finger here to kind of give me a little bit of control 
when I'm around the eye. So he's, he's in the, he's in the, I'm in control of his head. He's not going to move. I touch him with my finger first and then I come in with my tools so that he doesn't flinch and we actually do something where you don't want to do. So again, I like to clean up at the bottom of the eyebrow, clean up the top, clean up the middle. But most importantly, when I'm working with my clients, especially male clients, I'm not trying to change their eyebrows. I'm not trying to shape them. I'm not trying to arch them. Basically, I'm really just trying to get them back to a nice, clean, normal state. And I, I again, like that that's all you need to do. We're not here to change, we're not here to reshape them unless they, they really ask to be reshaped. But most of my clients don't ask that. So I'm a big fan of trying to, to, to knock off knock off boxes, knock off, check off the list. So if I do one eyebrow, what do I want to instantly come do? I want to knock off this other eyebrow so I don't forget. He's symmetrical, it's even. I'm gonna do the same situation. Nice control of my client, come in with my little kind of pivot finger, and then I bring my tool onto Josh. So I again, I just encourage you guys to don't just come in really far and all of a sudden just use my, my only thing touching my client is my tool. I just think there's no connection there. So I think it's very important to always have a nice control on my clients and just so that we, him and I are both kind of in, in uniform shape and we're not, I don't make him flinch because that's one thing I don't want to do is actually make him flinch and I give him a little soul patch somewhere. So like I said, I'm a kind of a big fan of kind of working as I go. So let's go ahead and just kind of start shaping up some of this already. So I'm gonna kind of tap in again. I will go back over all this haircut and line everything else up, but most importantly, I'm just trying to find a shape for Josh. So I'm gonna come around here. I like to look at my points. I like to be straight on and kind of see where these points come so I could kind of get the same shape on each side. Go ahead, I'm gonna do a little bit of cheekbone detail. Cheekbone detail. Clean up the nose. Go ahead and just line up this just a little bit more. That's perfect. Again, I didn't have to do too much work. Sometimes we start really changing the line, start changing, moving back. We don't wanna move back that hairline. So I'm just trying to keep everything super natural. Working on this C shape a little bit, even though we're gonna do a bald fade, I just wanna see my shape. Let's go ahead and clean up around the ear. I kinda of start my ear the same. I'm gonna start over here using the toe or the heel. I'm gonna flip and I'm gonna meet in the middle. One thing that I like to do is like, hey, Reeve, how do you find where, you know, where this line should be because we don't want to go too high and white wall them. We don't want to keep it too low where the hair is over the ear. So what I was always taught, what you do is you just press the ear back. So you just kind of press the ear back and that's kind of where your natural line should be. So I could bring this up just a little bit more. Nothing crazy. Just be patient. We know I always have a positive touch. Just not my tool on my client. Slowly reducing this haircut, shaping it up the way I want. Let's clean up this C shape just a little bit more. Again, my client just has really just beautiful dark hair. And some, there, there are some areas where it, you know, it's not as thick in little bitty areas. So that's gonna be, as we get dive into this fade, we'll have to really make sure that we're trying our hardest to just make everything really smooth and buttery for our clients. So let's go ahead, start lining up our back. Again, I'm gonna start here, cleaning up around the ear. Bending the ear. I think a lot of people are afraid to move that ear around. I, it, I think God created it to be flexible so we could get really nice fiery haircuts. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna position my client always, not to hurt him, not to make him uncomfortable, hurt his neck or anything. But most importantly, I am gonna always position my client in the ear or the neck or the head so that him and I both get the desired look that we want. So 
Don't be afraid to show control and to move these guys around so that we get a really beautiful haircut. And I think a lot of new, newer stylists that I have in my shop, they're just afraid to, to get in there and really touch their client. I think we live in a, in a world where, you know, after COVID, it's just kind of, we're just kind of uncomfortable being that close to someone, I feel like. So, you know, I, I've noticed that even in haircuts lately that people are just kind of, like I said, they're just kind of far away. They're, they're not touching their client. But I think it's very, very important to always have a nice, solid, comfortable, control, positive touch on our clients to really create a cool look. So let's go ahead and bring him down. His hair, see how, I mean, his neckline's pretty unique, you know, so it's, it's kind of almost looks like a little M. We have these little points coming down, but majority of this fade, I assume this will be even gone. You know, we're gonna bald that out. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna come and just come straight down. I'm not trying, I would never, think to like line it up to here where it's like the, the thin points are. So I'm, I'm not gonna do that now. Come around, let's make sure this comes straight down. I'm gonna push into my haircut. Okay. Perfect, so I'm gonna remove this and let's go ahead and like let's go ahead and put that little part in real quick as well so i'm gonna jump back on my grooming spray i'm gonna hit this part real quick and the reason i like to I, again i like to make all my guidelines kind of first just so i can see where this hair is going so again why i like the grooming spray because it just adds a little bit of tack it allows me to really move that hair and more importantly the hair just kind of stays there, so I have some pliability, I can move the hair around, and then once I'm done with it, it really likes to stay there. So let's go ahead and find Josh's part. We've been putting a hard part in it. We, again, very fine, nothing super thick is the goal here. Just enough so he could like find it very easily when he's combing his hair. Again, I'm about to use my Velcro strips. And I just like these because if I use these metal, if I use the metal ones, sometimes it leaves a, like the, the pressure on them kind of leaves a little indention in the haircut and I don't want that. So that's why I like to use these Velcro strips. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab my Hattori Hanzo's real quick. What I like to do, get straight on with my client and I'm gonna tilt him over towards me like this. So now I have really good vision of this line you know, I'm not over here, I'm not behind it trying to come forward, I'm not in front of it trying to go back. What I like to do is I like to be straight on my guy at first so I could really tap this line in. And again, most important, we're not trying to make this wide. So let's just be careful. I just go through and tap, tap. And really, I'm almost just using like a quarter of my blade. I'm not using the whole thing. I'm actually, I have my, it's tilted a little bit. So the only thing touching my client is maybe a quarter of this blade. This other half inch of blade really isn't doing anything for now because I want to be really precise with this first initial line. Just using the toe of it. And what I do is I kind of do a little typewriter effect. So I'm going to come all the way back using the toe, and then I'm gonna come forward using the other toe. Kind of grabbing the hair from a different angle. And once I kind of have that initial line, then I'm gonna go straight on down, and I'm gonna kind of push down, and I kind of slide back and forth, trying to just edge that out a little bit more. So straight down, back and forth. Straight down, back and forth. Straight down, back and forth, straight down, back and forth. So that's how I'm gonna do that to get a really nice clean line. Again, not trying to make this too thick, keep it super clean so that when he runs a comb through it or styles it out in the morning, he has a really nice haircut. So, and, and easier to find that part for him. So what I like to do now, I'm gonna be very careful. I was coming like this. Now I'm gonna flip and I'm gonna come at a different angle now, okay? So same situation, main objective, not get too wide. We don't need a landing strip right here. It's a nice, clean line. 
and then we'll bust out a razor later on in the cut. Back to my original stance, coming back in. One thing about this, we, the studio here, we don't have a mirror, and I think the mirror never lies, so I'm just gonna kinda take a look here. That's looking really good for now. And like I said, we'll get the razor work in here in a bit to really get that going. So, we're gonna be aggressive today with Josh. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna add one more Velcro strip. Cause we did all the work. We did a lot of beautiful work up top. So why would I accidentally wanna accidentally cut into that work we already worked on? So let's go ahead and just get all this good hair up and out of the way. So let's go ahead. I like to just kind of pull up and just let it naturally fall right there. And we want to keep all those bangs in that hair right there. So this is the hair that I'm going to work on my bald fade with. And we're going to go from there. Like I said, I'm going to be aggressive with Josh today. Um, I'm going to snap my guideline with my magic clips. I'm going to go tiger paw, which is kind of like, see how it kind of looks like a little tiger paw here. So I'm gonna tap this line in like this, and then I'm gonna jump on my trimmers to really kind of start debulking this haircut today. So I like to start in the back with this, and I'm gonna just kind of find, look at the shape of his head. It kind of cuts in really hard, you know, at the bottom of this. So we don't wanna drop that line like right here because it would be hard to bust out. So I'm gonna drop it right below it at first. Just a little bit of pressure, nothing crazy. Again, I wanna be able to really kind of fade this out easily. And I'm really just watching just the curvature of his head, trying to find a nice flow about this. I'm gonna come back around. Again, I'm barely pressing onto this. Thank you, Josh. Following the shape of his head. Clean lines equal clean haircuts. So I'm gonna try to get this line as clean as possible. Again, I'm not really pressing too hard onto his scalp. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and start reducing this bulk. Taking it straight to my guideline. If your clipper seems a little loud, which mine does, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of cool care today. Okay, and I like to. Instantly kind of quiets it down. You can kind of clean off any excess cool care. And again, I'm right back into it. Just following my guideline. Again, I'm not trying to irritate his skin or scalp, so I have a very soft touch allowing my tool to do the work. Most importantly, I'm just watching which way his hair grows. I'm always attacking it straight on is the trick. His hair kind of grows at a little bit of a slant here. So if you notice, even my clipper is at a little bit of a slant. Clean, 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 taking it straight to that guideline. So far, perfect. Again, I like to have a clean canvas, so here in a second, I'm gonna blow them off, get all this loose hair off of them. Most importantly, so I could just see my work. I could just see where I need to keep cleaning.
Really aggressive cut here. Straight into that guideline. Straight into that guideline. Bending that ear so I have a nice controlled cut. Making it easier for myself, making it a better haircut for Josh. So far so good. Clean, clean, clean. Let's go ahead and blow them off real quick. So now I'm going to move away from my comb, get on a, just a little bit of a bristle brush here. And again, I'm just gonna keep cleaning up this a little bit more. Here in a second, I wanna look at straight on at them, making sure our guidelines are even on both sides. Thank you, Josh. Best way to do that is just straight on. It looks like both of my guidelines are right at his temples, which is where I want it to be. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to move to a, my tightest trimmer and I'm gonna just keep, keep just dwindling this down, reducing this fade down. I want it nice and tight. Most importantly though, I mean, I have this, there's this magic layer. You, it's gonna be hard to see, but there's about an eighth of an inch from here to this hair that I don't really want to get into. I'm just going to take my trimmer up to about right here all the way around because I want a little bit of that darkness to make my fade easier to work into. So if you notice here in a second, I'm only taking it up to right about an eighth of an inch from that guideline, okay? Very important. We need, we need it to have a nice transition from this nice skin, this white skin, all the way into that dark hair. So if I would have taken this trimmer all the way to that guideline, would not I be able to fade it out? Yeah, probably, I, don't get me wrong, I, I could probably sit there and do it, but why would I wanna make my life harder when I can make it easier? So again, I'm just gonna slowly move him over. Again, I'm not taking it all the way to my guideline about an eighth of an inch to it and stopping. Most importantly, I think a lot of new barbers don't understand, you don't just see the haircut, you listen to the haircut. So let me be quiet for a second and I'll show you like right here, you can't really hear anything, right? You don't hear any hair being taken, right? That means our job's done, but watch me move over here. Hear that? That's the hair that we're, we're, we would have missed if we would have, because it looks like it's clean, it looks like it's done, but I could hear some hair being taken. That means we're not done, guys. So let's just be patient, nice and flat, listening to the haircut, taking it to about a, just right underneath of that first guideline. So I have a little bit of hair to work with when I fade up. Listening to the haircut. Bending that ear out of the way, giving me a perfect view of what I'm doing here. Perfect, I'm gonna switch them all the way around. Thank you, Josh. Don't be afraid to pinch that hair, make it nice and taut. Gives your clipper a little extra to grab. Taking it to about an eighth of an inch to that guideline. Again, I, I, I just look at, when I'm, when I'm cutting hair, it's like I'm building the house. I want a nice foundation. I want nice walls in my house. I want a nice roof. Um, with anyone with a house, if you don't have a good foundation, we really don't have a good house. So I like to really try my hardest to, to get to a really beautiful foundation first. So then I can start really working up this haircut and really making it really look good. But if I don't have a nice foundation first, it's gonna be very hard for me to really kind of usher a good haircut through the rest of the way. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna move them all the way back. If you notice, I like to kind of go back and forth, back and forth, kind of cross-checking as I go. 
take them all the way back around. I can still hear some hair being taken, so let's just be patient. A little ear detail, I'm already here, so why not? Okay, this sounds really good so far. I'm liking the way it looks. And we're gonna go a little tighter here in a second. So I'm gonna drop this. Let's go ahead and blow them off. Okay guys, so what I wanna do now is I'm going to do some foil work. So with the foil shaver, it gets really tight hair, microscopic hairs only. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hit them with a little bit of razor work first, then move into my foil shaver. What I like to do when I use my, and I'm just gonna use my feather razor, it has a brand new blade on it, and all I'm trying to do is just get any bitty long hairs that that foil shaver might pull if my trimmers or clippers missed it. So I'm always gonna block his face, and I'm just gonna hit the very bottom of this fade. Most importantly, let's finish up his neck, and do his neck real quick as well. So I always kind of halfway through, I'm gonna drape him up. You can see all this little baby hair is here. I'm gonna hit him with a little bit of this air control. And what it does, that air control just adds a little bit of tack to those baby hairs. So when I run this feather razor over, you know, it's gonna have something to really grab onto those little bitty hairs. So again, I'm just gonna hit these corners and most importantly, I'm gonna get this neckline. I always try to go below the shirt line. So I'm always gonna move that, that shirt down so I could get low into this cut. Nothing worse than he's, he's actually not that hairy of a guy, so that's awesome. But a lot of times there'll be like hair kind of sticking out and that's just a pet peeve of mine. So why not just kind of pull that shirt up a little bit now I'm just gonna take this razor just below that collar line so when anyone's looking at him, you know, from behind, this is just nice and clean and buttery. So that's just one thing I like to do is just to really kind of get low into my cut. I'm gonna come around here. Just again, we're gonna, we're gonna use the foil shaver so it's gonna get a lot tighter. But again, this feather razor, all I'm trying to do is just if there was any bitty long hairs that I missed, this thing is gonna get first. Boom. We're gonna move on to my foil shaver now. And I'm just gonna do his neck, bottom of his neck, and I'm gonna drape him back up. So hit it with a little bit of Sterling's gold onto my foil. And I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna come up. And I'm just doing the neckline so I can in, drape him back up so hair's not going down his shirt. And then we'll continue this fade. I could hear some hair being taken, so let's just be patient for a second. I always like to use the back of my hand to feel for any stubble, anything I missed as well. So if you notice, I'm always kind of using the back of my hand to feel the skin, to feel the hair. Nice and smooth. I'm gonna blow them off real quick. Make sure we get blow, blow off out of our shirt. I'm gonna drape them back up. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna prep his skin for some foil work. And I'm gonna hit him with a little bit of Johnny B Preve Shave. And I'm gonna hit just nice and low. And then I'm gonna grab a hot towel so I can soften up the bottom of this haircut. So what I like to do is I just kind of drape it around, drape it around, and I'm just gonna apply pressure on him for a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, when I'm like this, my glass, I know he's relaxed, he probably has his eyes closed. Gives me about you know 30 seconds of chill time for myself, so I'm not gonna lie, I even close my eyes during the process, just catch my breath, just kind of get my heart rate good. You know, I'm adding pressure, I'm, I'm just relaxed. So like his energy is kind of coming through, you know, out of him, through me to the floor. So this is just a good time just to kind of chill for a second. It's warm, it's confident. So it's just, just holding it here, kind of softening up those cuticles. Just being patient. You can kind of, a little massage. You can kind of work that towel in a little bit more. Perfect. Now I could just really focus 
real low into this fade. Listening to the haircut. Again, not going up too high. Keeping some of that dark hair closer to that guideline. And really bolding this out real nice for Josh. Not much hair, you can't hear much hair, so that's good. You got a little bit over here. Being patient, allowing the tool to do the work. Moving that ear out of the way. Not going all the way to that guideline, keeping some of that darker hair for both of us. Moving that ear out of the way, I kind of like to do a little rocking horse around the ear, get nice and close and tight. Don't be afraid to flip your full shave around to kind of cross check. Hit it at different angles, attack it at different angles. Again, if you notice, I'm using the back of my hand to feel the cut, see if I'm missing anything. Let's go ahead and do a little rocking horse behind this ear right here. Again, I could hear hair being taken, so I need to be patient. Again, I think humans, we're kind of lazy naturally, so we just want to kind of get, get to where we're going as quick as we can. But when it comes to haircuts, you know, we have to kind of fight the urge to move on before we should. Um, I get caught up in it as well, especially maybe if I'm running behind, uh, you know, I have a client waiting for me, you know, but most importantly, if you do get behind, I don't think the trick is to rush your client. I, you know, let's say you get 10 minutes behind. The main thing is just don't take 10, 15 minutes from your next client. Yeah, you might be behind, but I, I, all my clients know they're gonna get 30 minutes to an hour with me every time. I'm not gonna, just because I'm running behind on my last client doesn't mean I'm jipping Josh out 15 minutes from his haircut. Like, I think somehow I've been cutting hair for 20 some years now and I get off work at the same time almost every day. So like you will make up the time. So right now I am really confident that I have a nice, nice foundation for my client's fade and we get to work up from here. So I'm a big fan of reducing bulk first. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to actually take down some of this bulk first and then get back into my fade. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab maybe my three guard and just kind of see where this is at. So I think my three will be a good guard to start just reducing this bulk first, kind of create my shape, and then I'll be able to really fade this out. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump on my three guard. I'm going to have it completely closed. I'm going to start in the back of Josh's hair. And I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start reducing some of this bulk. And most importantly, I am just going to go straight up from his scalp. Not trying to round in or anything, just straight up from his skull. I'm not going to really use a comb right here. Just being patient. Reducing some of this bulk. His hair grows at an angle over here, so I'm just watching which way his hair grows. Being patient, let's work our way around now. Coming straight up. Okay. 
a nice little flick out the very top of this, watching which way his hair grows. Again, just making my way around again. Moving that ear out of the way. His hair kind of, if you notice, it grows really aggressively. It's not growing down now, it's kind of growing forward. So what do I need to do? I need to attack at a different angle. Nice flick out. Watching which way his hair grows, finding that pattern. The quicker I could find a pattern to follow, I believe the easier my haircut is. So let's just move him back around. Watching which way his hair grows, attacking, attacking, attacking. Making sure that good hair isn't creeping down into my fade and actually cutting some of that good hair that we worked on at the beginning of the haircut. I am going to start opening up my guard as I work up this cut, so I'm going to just click it up one. I can still hear hair being taken, so we need to be patient. Allow the tool to do the work. Again, nice control my client's head so he doesn't jolt. I can move him around if I need. I can move around as well. Checking it from different angles, different lights. Opening it up again. Moving that bulk. Again, his hair grows really aggressively forward right here. So if you notice how aggressively I need to move my clipper, opening it up again. Pulling that skin nice and tight gives me a little, my clipper a little bit more something to grab onto that hair. His hair grows really aggressively right here to the kind of cuts in real quick. So we need to follow that. Okay, all the way open now, guys. Again, be careful of that. Hey, we don't want any of that good hair falling down. I could hear hair being taken, so let's be patient. I'm gonna sit here just for a little bit longer. Coming straight up, not trying to round that, that corner up, or not trying to round into that corner. Keep it nice and straight up. It's gonna give us a nice clean look when we're looking straight at our client. Being patient here. Let's come back around. Here in a second, I might even grab my foreguard to finish this little segment out. I am going to do that. So, moving to my foreguard now, closing it all the way. Because I was at a three guard that was all the way open. And what I like to do here is we're getting kind of working on this little area right through here. His hair grows straight across. So, what I like to do is I like to point the point, the very top of my guard won't go any higher than that natural, that part we just did, okay? So that's, that's my guideline. I'm following that, that straight part that we just did. So this, that is going to stay right there. I'm not going to go any higher. But most importantly, I have it tilted out. So it's kind of, it's going to be tighter here. And as we go up, my, my clipper is kind of tilted over. So this hair is going to, kind of grow out. So, but most importantly, I'm still watching this tip follow that line. And I'm just gonna follow that out. Follow it out. I could tilt my client's head towards me a little bit. Following that guideline. 
Because I don't want to actually get up into that good hair. If I actually made that hair short, it would kind of stick out. It wouldn't lay over nice. So that's why it's so important not to take that guard any higher than that line right there. If you want to hold these down so they don't move, we can. So far, really, really good. I'm glad I jumped on my four to kind of reduce this. Same situation, let's move them over. And I'm just gonna follow right through here. You can hear some hair being taken on this corner, so let's just be patient. Okay, so I'm gonna take a break from the clipper for a second. Let's blow them off. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of detail work with my just scissor over comb action. So I'm gonna add, I don't, I'm not gonna add water. I'm gonna continue with my Layrite grooming spray. And I'm just really kind of focusing this little corner, these, these like right above the occipital bone right now. So let's just barely hit it. Add some tacky water. Okay, so I'm gonna face him the camera now. Again, using my swivels here. And I'm just going to comb straight up into that part and just see if there's any hairs that pop out at me. That's looking really good. So now I could restart on my fade and I have, I, it's just gonna be really easy for me to blend into this little shape that we created up here. So again, I usually have, you know, I, Josh's hair to me is, has always been a little more difficult. So I usually just take my time with him. I've actually learned a lot already, just kind of talking out loud. Um, I know all of us, as we cut, we're thinking out, you know, we're kind of thinking in our heads, but I'm realizing how important it is to kind of speak it out loud as well. So I know you don't really talk like this when we're cutting with, you know, our clients, but, you know, if you have a good friend or anything and you just want to kind of talk out loud, why, more importantly, if you're teaching a new employee, maybe you have a, a younger barber, younger stylist in your, in your shop and he's sitting there not doing anything. You have a good client that you and him, you know, you and the client have good energy and you're like, hey, Josh, do you mind if I teach Carlos how to, how to cut your hair real quick? And they're never going to say no. They almost never say no. And more importantly, I think the client actually likes it. I think he likes hearing what's going on in my head and it really kind of showcases like how much thought and process and energy is actually being used while we cut you know a lot of us you know we kind of make it look easy for our clients our client just thinks you know what shit man this guy he's just autopilot he's not even thinking anything but really like your brain's going a million miles an hour you know you have hand eye coordination going on you have sharp objects going on like your brain is thinking, you know, so it's almost nice for your client to kind of really see, you know, like, man, like Reed's really putting a lot of thought into this. So remember, we put that initial guideline in with my magic clips. So we're going to really start this fade and work it on up now. So he does like it nice and tight higher. So here we go. So I'm going to, I had it, completely closed here. So I'm gonna open it up about halfway. And we're just gonna come up. I'm gonna get on my bristle brush. And I'm gonna just start reducing piece by piece. Nice flick out. Probably go up maybe a half inch, kind of starting kind of slow at first, just getting my bearings. Following that shape that I created with that guideline.
following that shape. I'm gonna try to make this line as clean as possible. Being patient, again, clean lines equal clean haircuts. Can I have this about all the way open? I'm gonna open it up just a little bit more here in a second. And we're just gonna be patient. Again, there's no rush here. I don't have a client behind me right now, so I could just really sit here and make sure my tool is doing majority of the work. Creeping it up just a little bit higher. He has a couple little scars on his head, so don't let that kind of get in your head that you 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 know you took it too short or it, it it's not blending well. You know, like again, people's scalps and. Heads are all different, so you know we're gonna make everything work as best possible. You see a little scar right here, but you know you just gotta kind of kind of look through that. You don't really focus on that kind of stuff. You just trust that your your clipper is creating a nice even cut, and we're just gonna go right through it. So don't don't let little things like that kind of deter you from what you're looking at or what you're doing. Okay, I'm about a half inch from my guideline. I don't think I want to take it any higher, but I do want to clean this line up. So I'm just going to make sure my line's even, all the way open, nice even line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to work my way back down and blend out this line. So I'm going to actually close my clipper that I have here and try to bust this line out a little bit more. This side over here is just has a little finer hair. So that the side on the right is just a little bit more difficult, I believe, than what I'm looking at over here on the left side of his head. Okay, so now I'm gonna close it all the way. I'm gonna start back where I originally started and I'm just gonna try to work this line out a little bit at the bottom. So I'm gonna tilt his head. I do a nice little circular motion. Just using the toe or the heel of my clipper. Just working out that line. Working it out. Again, I notice I'm applying pressure right above where I'm working. So I have something to really kind of tap into. More importantly, that skin's not moving around, accidentally move, pushing that fade up more. Nice circular motions. And most important, if you see where my thumb is, it's right above always where my clipper is. And it's just so I have a nice tight skin. I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go all the way around here. Moving that skin, and I'm just hitting that bottom line. Hitting that bottom line here. Nice circular motion.
being patient. Whatever you put the line in with is usually what we could get the line out with. And again, these haircuts take a while, so we just need to be patient, enjoy the process. That's why having a good conversation with your clients is important because it kind of kills some time. It doesn't make the haircut or the service seem as long when you're having a good, strong conversation, talking about kids, talking about future, talking about the past, talking about good things, you know, like it just helps, helps the whole process go smooth. If we're just kind of sitting here in silence, you know, it's just going to feel like the whole day goes by so slow. So I think it's important to just to have a good conversation with your clients. And what I've realized what the conversation does, it makes you remember your clients. So like, you know, I know Josh's kids wrestle. I know he helps. I know he's on the SWAT team. I know, you know, his wife loves doing stand-up comedy. You know, there's so many things that, you know, I know about Josh over the years, but what it reminds me of is just not about Josh. It reminds me of his haircut. It reminds me of what we do, you know? So like, people are like, well, Reeve, how the hell do you remember all these haircuts? You have all these clients. And it's because I because I know my people. I know my client. I know I know their names. I know if they have dogs or where they live or what they do. You know, so it's like if I know the person, I know the haircut. I get to put like a face and a name and an energy together with the haircut. So it's like people are like, oh, how do you remember each haircut? Well, I don't remember each haircut. I remember each person. And I think there's just something very powerful about having a good conversation and a good good energy and rapport with your client for them to want to come back to you because we know each other. And I think that's just one of the most beautiful things that barbering allows us to do is to really get to know people. I mean, at first he was a stranger, but now I could call him a friend, you know? And I just think there's not that many jobs where we are where we have that opportunity. You know, like really, I almost look at myself as a therapist, but you really, it's not really polite for you to be best friends with your therapist, you know? so. We, this is almost like in the middle ground where we could give each other good wisdom, good thought, but we, but we, we get to hang out and have a beer or, ha, you know, hang out and chill out for af after this, you know? So again, I just have a little bit more of that line to buff out. So I'm going to jump on my trimmer here. You could hear that hair and I'm just hitting that line. Just hitting that line right here. Watching it melt away. Nice circular motion. Here in the hair, so let's be patient. I've seen a lot of comments, oh, hour long video for a 20 minute haircut. I think those are hilarious because you know, here I, I really, what I'm doing, I'm just talking, you know, I, I don't, if I would, we'd have our own conversation, but I wanna, you know, I wouldn't be stopping and, and doing all this but you know what some of these haircuts do take a long time and i don't care you know like like i said i really enjoy what i do i enjoy my time with my client they like they're the ones who book the appointment so they could book an hour with me or they could book 30 minutes with me so it's like you know if they book an hour with me guess what i'm gonna give them i'm gonna give them an hour long service you know i don't care if it's just a buzz cut like we're gonna add a men's facial we're gonna add hot towel treatment we're gonna add some razor work we're gonna make sure it's the best you know buzz cut in the world so you know i just think you know it's up to you to know your worth and to, to really try to create something special for your client so take all the time if it's a 30 minute service take 30 minutes don't get it done in 10 don't get it done in 20 so you could go check instagram or hit the vape or whatever your styles do these days so just make sure we're really giving our clients all the attention. So here in a second, I'm really liking the way this bottom of this fade is starting to look on Josh. And we're about to move on. If you really want to get into it, which I will here in a second, I'm actually going to do one last thing. We'll blow them off real quick or brush them off. I'm going to jump back on my feather razor. And I'm just going to hit that bottom line again. I think the feather razor just gets a smidge closer than my trimmer. And I'm just going to hit that line. Okay. So back to my clipper. I was on a no guard. Now I'm going to be on a half guard. 
and I'm gonna have it all the way closed. I'm gonna start in the back and I'm gonna work my way forward again. So I'm gonna start here, again, straight off the scalp. I'm not rounding in. I'm not trying, I, I want it to come straight up. Watching which way his hair grows. Straight up. Now I'm going to open it up all the way, and I'm going to go about a half inch up. Clean lines equal clean haircuts, so again, I just want each one of these guidelines to be nice and clean. With the way his hair kind of softens up a little bit, kind of hard to see your guideline from, from the white scalp and that thick hair. So you, we just kind of have to visualize it and kind of just, just understand that's where it's at. Again, coming straight up. I have it all the way open. And really what I think I'm gonna do, guys, I'm actually going to, I, I have a half guard all the way open. I'm gonna jump on a one guard all the way open. I'm gonna jump on a two guard all the way open. And remember, we did that three guard to kind of reduce some bulk. I'm gonna do a three guard all the way open, and then I'm gonna bring it all the way back. I'm gonna start escalating back down this fade and really honing this in. So here in a second, jumping off my half guard, moving to my one guard all the way open. Being patient, watching which way his hair grows. Watching which way his hair grows. Here in a second, I'll jump on, I mean my, yep, I'll jump on my one and a half guard all the way open, jump on my two guard, all the way open, jump on my three guard, all the way open, and then I'll run it all the way back. So this is my one guard, all the way open. Okay guys, one and a half guard now, all the way open, following my pattern, coming straight off his skull, I'm not trying to round in whatsoever. Show you this other side for a little bit. See how different is uh, just the kind of the way his hair grows is quite a bit different on each side, but that's okay. I could hear hair still being taken, so we just need to be patient for a second. Okay, here in a second. I am gonna jump on my two guard, like I said, then my three, and then we'll really kind of start ushering down this cut. So that was my one and a half, jumping on a two guard, watching which way his hair grows. It's all about listening to the hair, looking at the hair. Making sure that good hair up top's not falling down, so I'm gonna push that Velcro strip a little tighter here. I love a circular motion. If you don't, if you see a little area that maybe going up and down ain't doing the trick, do a little circular motion. It kind of allows those guards to kind of grab the hair a little bit better. 
So far, this is gonna be really good for Josh. Two guard, now I'm moving all the way to my three guard, which remember, that's what I use to kind of debulk this area first. All the way open. Following my hair pattern that I created for each other. Well, not I created his hair, his head, his hair created it. So again, following the path of the hair. Again, if you guys have any haircuts you would like to see or type of hair or type of haircut or different techniques that you might want me to pop off and, and show, please feel free to leave a comment or message me and we'll try our hardest to find those models that you guys want to see. Okay guys, so remember what I said, now I'm gonna start working all the way down my clipper. So this was a three guard open. I'm gonna go click by click, a little tighter, and I'm gonna usher all the way back down this fade. I know it seems like it takes a while, but man, it's gonna really create a nice buttery look, especially on a client who has hair such as this, where there's, again, it's just, there's a lot of contrast from as dark as, dark as it is up here where we left a lot of length, to as tight and white that it is down here, there's contrast. So when there's that much contrast, there's a lot of fading, a lot of, a lot of blending that we're gonna need to do to really create a cool look. So again, just a little tighter on my three guard. You hear a little hair being taken, so it's, let's just be patient. All the way tight. I don't hear too much hair being taken, so we can move on to our two guard. Let's go ahead and blow them off just a little bit so we can see our, see our canvas. So now I'm jumping back on my two guard here, all the way open, and I'm gonna usher down. Again, most important thing I'm doing right now is I'm coming straight up from the scalp. You can hear a little bit of hair being taken, so I want to be patient for a second. A little tighter. A little tighter. A little circular motion. So far, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. A little tighter. All the way tight, two guard. If you wanna really kinda of get into some tight places, don't be afraid to move that scalp around. Awesome. One and a half guard, all the way open, following my same pattern. A little circular motion, some of these little tougher areas and these back little corners right here. A little tighter now. Tighter. Again, like I said, Josh, just for some reason, I always find, found his hair hard, so I, like, I wanted to kind of showcase it to each other. And again, I, I feel like I've learned a lot. I, I always feel like I attack Josh's hair differently because I'm just trying to always figure out what is best for him. And um, so far I'm really, really kind of digging the shape and, and just look that we're creating on him. So again, I'm really kind of starting to, as I get to these tighter guards, if you notice, I'm really starting to move the skin around so I could really get in there and make this look nice and buttery.
Okay. One guard all the way open. Again, you're kind of seeing my pattern, man. I really, once I find a, a pattern, a starting point, I, I like to start there and I have a finishing point. So if you notice, I've been starting in this corner, following this hair, but as I've gotten to a tighter guard, now I'm really, like I said, I'm really starting to move this hair out of the way, really creating a good look for Josh. A little tighter. Moving that skin nice and tight. All the way tight now. I might have one more click actually, so let's just be patient. Every click counts. Every, every little bit of that clipper movement, that guard movement, is where the money is, guys. So there we go. Oh, all the way tight now. If your barber isn't moving that lever around, you know, if he's just jumping from guard to guard to guard and he's not using that lever ever, I encourage you to go to find a different barber. Like that's just how I, I believe, like they're not really, like you could probably get a nice fade just using the, you know, the guards and not really using your lever much, but the real beauty really is, is using that lever to really gain as much range of depth and length that your clipper can create. So. Again, I think, I think you could tell just from the camera that, you know, there's just, his, his hair is fairly unique. His growth patterns are unique. Some areas are a little thicker. He has a little bitty scars kind of back here that kind of, kind of might throw off the fade. But if we just stick to our guns and really melt this out, it's, it's beautiful and it looks really, really good. So I'm all the way tight with my one guard. I can still hear some hair being taken, so I just want to be patient. I'm loving it. Okay. Half guard now. All the way open. I could hear hair being taken, so I know we're sitting pretty. A little tighter. Oh, sorry. <coughs> no, you're fine. Again, like you know, he had a little cough, right? So if you notice how I was, like, I was con con controlled. I was holding him. I felt his body moving, so I was able to bounce off. Again, if I was just sitting here like this, just with not touching my client, I'm in the zone watching the fade, not really figuring, you know, watching his body. You know, little things like that is the reason why I think it's a very beautiful reason to have nice control with our client. You know, I'm feeling his motions. If he needs a cough or sneeze, you know, like I could feel his body kind of about to take place. So I think that's what's why a good example of why it's important to, to kind of have a control of your client. So let's keep working this out. And remember, whatever you put the line in with is what you put, get the line out with. So here in a second, once we get on a no guard, this thing's really about to pop off. All the way tight now. I could hear hair being taken, so let's just be patient. OK, 
Okay, feeling pretty confident to move to a no guard now. This, I've been using this clipper like crazy, so I'm actually gonna put that one down because it's nice and warm. Since I'm going to metal on skin, I want it to be nice and cool. All the way open. I'm gonna be real patient right here, really blend this out. Nice circular motion. Henry, is the haircut looking good? Looks amazing. Thank you, sir. Yeah. We're getting there. It's hard and having a mirror is, is so important. Like to mirrors don't lie. I always I like the I, I like the quote that mirrors never lie. Um, they show what's true. So I, I'm constantly looking in the mirror at my fades, kind of the, for some there's just something about it when you're it's like changes the dimension of something. Like it really kind of shows like the flaws and things a mirror does. So maybe I will put it I might need to put a mirror here one day. So I'm just getting a little tighter and tighter using the toe and heel of my clipper. Tighter, tighter, tighter. I think I'm all the way tight now, guys. So here's some hair being taken, so let's just be patient. Okay, now make sure I'm all the way tight, just double checking. Now my last final touch now is with my trimmer. Again, I'm just going to use the toe. Kind of detail work. If you notice now I'm I don't want to come up anymore. I'm, I so have my back into to a, like a tiger paw hold with my clip, my trimmer here. Wow, this is looking really good. Okay guys, so let's blow them off again. Josh, you doing okay? Awesome. Taking off my Velcros. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna kind of, I, I already, like I said, we already kind of worked on the top, I know, but let's just, we're gonna double check now. We're gonna really kind of bring this together. So I'm gonna get them wet again. Water's our best friend when it comes to scissor work. Almost, it's like a temporary product, you know? It's like, it's like a product you could work, work with. So let's just add a little bit more water where that Velcro was, kind of made his hair stand up a little bit. Just let that water kind of break down that hair follicle a little bit. It's gonna make it a little easier for us to work with. See how that kind of starts to make it look cleaner. We always kind of wipe off our guy. Okay, so I just want to double check. I'm just gonna grab, get back on my Tori Hanzos, and I'm just gonna bring it all together. Just kind of grab if there's any corners, especially from where that fade was into this longer hair on this corner. And I'm, all I'm doing is I'm just cutting corners right now, just cutting any corners that I could find. Come straight up. I'm gonna kind of round around here. Okay. 
keeping it longer in the front, shorter in the back. Now that I look at them one-on-one, -on -one, it's just a little darker in this little corner right here. So we're gonna do some detail work. I'm gonna come in with the small teeth of my comb here. I'm gonna comb straight up, tilt out, and we're gonna work this out here. We're gonna be picky. Just a little trimmer over comb. We're looking very, very good right now. I'm gonna jump on a straight razor. I already put a brand new blade in so you don't have to bust my balls saying I didn't put a new blade. It's a brand new blade. I'll even add a little bit of cool care to disinfect it. And really I'm just gonna line them up a little bit, just a little bit more edge. A little bit more edge. Why not clean up those eyebrows? Very bottom of this fade. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little bit of ear work. I'm gonna bend that ear and I'm just gonna hit the very bottom. There's just nothing better than having some razor work done right around that ear. There's, you could feel the air whip around. You almost, it's like you're one with nature when you could have that nice crispy around the ear. Okay, same thing over here. Adding a nice little edge to it. This hair has a little bit of a different growth pattern. Do a little ear detail. Okay, I'm gonna move back to the very back. I'm just gonna add a little bit of pre-shave. Be careful of any blemishes, any moles, or any kind of skin tags. Okay, let's take this off. Last but not least, let's just line up that, that hard part one more time. Back to my Velcro strips, back to my grooming spray. And we're just gonna find this part. Should be a lot easier now. Because remember we already tapped it in at the very beginning of the cut. I'm gonna put these on just so I don't accidentally get lost in the sauce. And again, main objective here, just, just, just a baby with just a fine little line. Nothing crazy, just a fine little line. So let's go here. Again, this is just being patient.
Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to jump on my blow dryer real quick. I'm going to grab my brush. Start reducing, get all that moisture out of his hair. Again, a lot, what a lot of people don't understand is that my blow dryer is just a second brush. So I just want to make sure I'm, I'm brushing and blowing this hair in the direction I want it to go. If anyone knows me, they know I really like to kind of finish my haircuts using my scissors and my blow dryer at the same time. So that's what I'm going to do here in a second. Getting all that moisture out. Using the cold setting now, kind of a cool setting to kind of start locking this haircut into a nice shape for Josh. So now I'm going to finish this whole haircut. Well. We're getting there, but I'm going to kind of start kind of cleaning up anything, any loose hairs that are kind of flying out. I'm going to take my scissors straight to this part. Perfect. Hitting the crown real quick, double checking, making sure, like I said, it's a little shorter back here. As we advance forward, it gets a little longer. Last but not least, guys, I am going to run my foil shavers. One of my favorite techniques that I've kind of picked up on as long as I'm going with the hair. I do not want to go against the hair here, but I'm going to go with the hair. I'm going to take my foil shaver right on top of this cut, following the hair in the shape I want it to go. Here's some of that hair being taken. It's going to help round off this corner a little bit. I could come straight through this side over here. When styling out my client, I always like to ask the client, do you like more of a dry finish or a wet finish when it comes to product? Josh, do you like more of a dry or wet finish when it comes to your product? Dry. Dry, thank you. Again, all the detail work is possible. Okay, I'm gonna wipe them off real quick. Go ahead, I'm gonna, today I'm gonna, he said he likes a dry product today, so I'm gonna use the Layrite cement clay. Again, I'm right-handed, so I dip out the product with my right index finger. From here, I apply it to my palm. I get all that product off my index finger now, so now there's none on my index finger. It's all on my palm. Depending on how soft the product is, depending on if I need to do this next one, but this is a pretty tacky product, so now I use my right index finger and I, I start muddling the product, creaming it up, making it softer within my palm, okay? Now from here, this is very important. I'm gonna keep my fingers very wide. I'm gonna go in a circular motion to warm the product up even more. Now here, I'm gonna close my hands like this, a little praying mantis or starting the fire motion. And most importantly, when I put on this product, I'm creating an exterior shell. So if you notice, I'm not really putting the product into the hair, I'm putting the product 
onto the hair. And I can't describe what, you know, that's, that's the best, it's like an exterior shell. That's all I, I could kind of look at it and think of it of. And most importantly, we wanna make sure this exterior shell is even. So I want product, even though it's bald fade, I want the product dripped down all the way to the, the bottoms. I could clean up his eyebrows. And now, I wanna dig the product deeper. Because right now, the product's just kinda of sitting on top of the hair. I, want, I just wanna dig that product in a little deeper with a brush or a comb. I'm gonna use a brush today. Adds a little bit of lift. Oh yeah. Hit him with a little bit of hairspray. Last but not least, aftershave. And gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, that is how I do a nice bald fade for a wonderful client of mine. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment. Please subscribe. And thank you so much for watching The Art of Reduction. Thank you, Henry Malone Studios. And thank you, Josh, for being a great client and a great friend. And uh, you look pretty damn good, my friend. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy.